Today's topic will be a continuation of our discussion on tefillah, but specifically we're going to focus on the times of prayer. There's an uh, idea, halacha, that, that explains to us the ideal way to pray shachrit is with sunrise. Interestingly, we also see that the ideal way to pray mincha is with sunset. So you have an idea of praying to God with the sunrise and praying to God with the sunset. Uh, it's said about the Arizal that regarding Mincha, he would wait until before Shkia, which is sunset, to pray. Now, you don't have to wait until Shkia. The Halacha allows one to pray Mincha from a half hour after Chatzot Hayom, which is obviously Jewish midday, but to make things simple, we'll talk about 12 o'clock. And so a half hour, 12.30, you could pray. Now, sometimes Chatzot is 12.30, so you could pray at 1.00. 110. Sometimes Chatzot is at 11.30. You could pray already at 12.30 with the 11.45, so you could start to pray from already 12.15, 12.20. So you could actually pray Mincha from very early in the day, considerably. You have still a lot of time until you know, sunset. But we see from the Arizal, who was, of course, one of the greatest of the mystics that have ever been around, second to probably the Rabbi Shimba Yechai of the Zohar, we see from him that there's an added idea to pray with the sunset. And so what we want to do is understand a bit better what's so special about sunrise and sunset, that these are ideal opportune times to pray. Now, in order to appreciate sunrise and sunset, we're going to explain what is really the concept of day, a day which has within it a night and a day. But of course we separate, we talk about night is one thing and day is another. So the truth is, spiritually, the concept of night and day correspond to the divine attributes of chesed, which is kindness, and gvur, which is severity or judgment. Now, day, obviously, which is light, which is called, light is called good, so the day is, correlates to good, light, that represents chesed. Night, which is darkness, choshech, which is the opposite, that corresponds to gvur, concealment, uh, and, of course, judgment. For that reason, we see different things apply during the day that apply during the night. Um, now, when the sun starts to set, so that represents a shift from day, which is chesed, in general, day, which is chesed, to night, which is gvura. Also in the morning, when the sun rises, that obviously marks a shift from night, which is generally gvura, to day, which is chesed. We can already start to understand, you know, the, the different, you know, the deeper idea of praying at these times because the shift from chesed to gvura is powerful. We want to, you know, get in and a prayer just before it becomes night, before it's the harsh gvura, the harsh severity. So we get in before the sunset. Also, with the morning, as the sun rises, we, it's an ideal time to pray with the coming of chesed because that is a, a, an ideal time to gain through our prayers the mercy of Hashem. Now that's in general, day is chesed and night is gvur, but you know in particular like all things in the realm of holiness really day itself has within it chesed and gvur and night as well has within it chesed and gvur. The first part of the night corresponds to the gvur of gvur. Like we see from like counting of the Omer, we know that there's, there are attributes within the attributes. So the first half of the night is gvura, double gvura, gvura shiva gvura. That's the harshest part of the evening. From chatzot laila, from Jewish midnight onward, it's the chesed of gvura. It's a softer, uh, less harsh part of the evening. As a matter of fact, according to the customs of the Arizal, according to Kabbalah, once we shift from the harsher part of the night, the first half of the night, to the second half, one can already begin to, to say the morning blessings. Because this, the idea that it's already the chesed within Guvura, it's enough here, and it's already considered day from a, from, according to the Mekubalim. And in fact, that was the custom of the Arizal. Until today, we have the, the different Mekubalim, 
Kabbalists, and also even the general minhag among the Sephardim, many follow the uh, approach of the Arizal to, to begin saying the morning blessings. Morning blessings already after midnight, which is still dark. It's going to be dark for several hours. Yet it is an acceptable time to do the morning blessings because of the concept that we're already shifting to, towards chesed. Um, we see similarly in the first part of the, first part of the night also uh, things that are become restricted because of the particular uh, essence of the energy of the time. We find that, that according to the, the Psaq Halacha of the Ben Ishchai who, who follows the, the Kabbalah in Halacha as well, that of course he's not the only one, there are many others, that one should not read Torah Shebikhtav at night. Now, this is more specific to the first part of the night because it's harsher. Therefore, we see expressed from the different rabbis an idea of reading after midnight, Jewish midnight, Tehillim. Psalms. That, there, we, there's a discussion of whether you're allowed to read Psalms already during the night, but after the first half of the night, more so because even Davar HaMelech is said to have written the Psalms after midnight. But for the first half of the night, it's all forbidden, according to Kabbalah, to read, you know, Tanakh. Because Tanakh corresponds to Din. That level of, of spiritual level of Tanakh is also Din. And the first part of the evening is, we said, like Din, judgment. So we don't want to increase too much of this concept of judgment because that, that is not so, so ideal, according to Kabbalah. So we wait for Tehillim, at least, until the second half of the night. And for the rest of the Tanakh, we wait until morning. Of course, this, the Halacha permits... You know the standard halacha for Ashkenazim and and those that are not machmir to follow the uh, the, the the more strict psak of the, the according to Kabbalah permits the reading of these things, but again according to Kabbalah not. Now just to appreciate, we know that Yitzchak and Avram, Avram and Yitzchak represented also these same two attributes: Chesed and Gvura, kindness and uh, severity, and we see it comes out that Avraham corresponds to the prayer of Shach, actually Shachrit. The morning prayer corresponds to Avraham. And the afternoon prayer corresponds to Yitzchak. Now, there's a slight question we could ask, which of course hope we'll answer as well, that if Yitzchak corresponds to Gvura and Gvura is night, so why do we pray Mincha before the night, when we're approaching night? It's officially we still pray Mincha during the day. And we could answer like this. Really, Yitzchak, although he represents Gvura, we have to understand that he was born from Avraham, which is Chesed. So he represents a different type of, of Gvura that is sweetened, tempered from Chesed. This, in fact, is brought in the Zohar. The Zohar comments on the verse that says, that's repetitive. It says that, uh, you know, Avraham gave birth to Yitzchak. It, adds it, it says it an extra time. Let me just... You know, quote the exact words. The Eile told Dot Yitzchak ben Avraham. These are the, the generations or offspring of Yitzchak, the son of Avraham. And then it repeats Avraham holid et Yitzchak. Avraham gave birth to Yitzchak. Now that's absolutely repetitive. If Yitzchak is the son of Avraham, then obviously Avraham gave birth to Yitzchak, obviously, so to speak, through the, through the mother. So obviously he's the father. So what are we adding to say again that Avraham holid et Yitzchak? Avraham gave birth to Yitzchak. Even actually, holid is a term that really fits more with the woman. So the idea is spiritually, Yitzchak gave birth to, I'm sorry, Avraham gave birth to Yitzchak spiritually in that the Gvura of Yitzchak came through Avraham. And that's what the Zohar says. The Zohar says that Avraham gave birth to Yitzchak Vadai. Certainly it's Avraham who gave birth to Yitzchak because Yitzchak represents this sweetened, tempered Gvura which is actually beneficial to the world. That it's about bringing balance and stability to the world bringing structure to the world, and also involving himself in acts of chesed. They say that he also certainly was a, a man of chesed that went out and did the type of things that Avraham did because a son follows in the footsteps of a father. And so he was also involved in trying to convert Jews to, people to Judaism to recognize the truth of God. So he, act, he was involved in acts of kindness, but through the attribute of gvura. And so by putting mincha at the end of the day, what we could, could represent this idea that the chesed which is leaving now has to affect the night that starts. So we want to sweeten it. We want to temper the night. So we pray before the night starts. 
Yaakov actually represents the evening prayer, which is in the absolute actual time of Gevorah, and uh, we'll save the discussion of Yaakov for another time. Now let's look at Yitzchak a little bit and his morning prayer. You know, there's a beautiful visual idea that we can actually bring out with Avraham and, uh, and the morning prayer. When the day begins, it's already, it's still night, it's black outside, it's dark. How does the, the night turn into day? How do we see a shift from night to day? We have the beginning sparks, rays of sunlight that pierce through the dark horizon and start to illuminate one, the, the sky. And those sparks of light, those, those that are coming from the sun, gather up, add up together, slowly, slowly, and we see a shift before our eyes. We could, you could actually take a camera and, 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 and film it, and uh, you'll see beautifully how all of a sudden, magically, the, we see just a brighter and brighter sky until the sky turns blue and it's day. This happens before the actual sun appears, and then the sun rises, and that is the opportune time to pray shachrit. What this idea really symbolizes is the idea of the conquering of chesed over gvura, in that ultimately God built the world on chesed, chesed olam yibaneh. However, uh, however, there's gvura. Gvura needs to be here, as we mentioned, because it gives stability and structure to the world, but if gvura is too dominant, then it's very difficult and harsh for us. So we need a balance. What we ultimately need is we need the, the, the right side to be stronger than the left side. We need chesed to dominate Gvora. And that's why there are different customs that we do. We always give preference to the right hand before the left hand. Um, even in our tefillin straps, the, the right strap is longer than the left strap. Anyway, and that's what we see in the morning. The, the, the overpowering of the midah of Avraham and light and chesed conquering the darkness bit by bit, drop by drop, until... We have we come to all chesed, which is again hinted to in the verse olam chesed jibane. The actual verse brought about praying shachris with rising of the sun is yarucha im shamesh. You, you, we will see God with the rising of the sun. Now, with this understanding and appreciation of prayer times, it's not it's no longer just oh I got to get up and pray in the morning or oh, I got to go I got to pray before I go to bed. We see it's very deep. It's connected with the essence of time. Time is also a creation that God instilled in, in the world. And we have to work with the time because man and the world and time are all three, compo three components that are working together. Now to conclude today's discussion, I want to bring a beautiful idea from, from the Hasidic masters. This is brought in uh, Lekutei Moharan from Rabbi Nachman. The Reish Pei Bet, the, the Torah, the lesson numbered Reish Pei Bet, which is 282, discusses a concept that's very famous in, amongst the Brez of Hasidim called Nukudot Tovot, uh, uh, drops of goodness. Now, interestingly enough, the student of Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Natan, when he, he took the teachings of Rabbi Nachman that were ordered in one way by different topics, and he chose this, this lesson, the lesson number 100, 282, and he started his book of Halachot, according to Hasidic uh, ideology, with this lesson. Now, it's interesting. Why would he start a book of halacha, which starts from the morning, prayers and all that, with the 282nd lesson? There's obviously something deep happening over here. He took this lesson, and this is the idea. He starts the book of, of, of Lukute Halachot, well-known book by him. And we see it's not by chance. It's actually very, very, very detailed and very connected. The concept of sparks of goodness, Nukudot Tovot, is exactly the same idea of sunrise. That's why it comes in the laws of sunrise. Because we have to look at the world and a person as well as, you know, having within him good and bad, this balance between chesed and gevura. One has to look at himself positively and through that positive look on himself, donning him the kafzchut, judging him on the side of favor, he can overpower the negative side. And so too, the morning, the sunrise and the drops of chesed overpowering gevura and the darkness Co coincides with this concept of judging oneself favorably, finding the good aspects within him, and eventually judging him to the side of <laughs> side of positive, and that's that's the lesson. So one should look in the actually look look afterwards detailed. It's a it's a lengthier lesson. Obviously, I've made it short to fit with the concept of chesed and and the transforming of night to day. Uh, with that, we conclude today's concept. Uh, have a good day. <laughs>